Yo, what up? And I'm back. Thank you very much. For those of you who are unsure about the object currently shown behind me, you are all staring down the barrel of a fully loaded revolver. Much like my friends and I were this past June. See, it was at this point that all hopes to start the summer with a bang completely diminished. That was not the type of bang that we wanted to start nor end our summer with. Now, as bad as I wish I could come up here and tell you that the reason the man holding this weapon did not shoot us was because we had a civil conversation with him, we talked to him in a civil manner, and he simply just put his gun away. I also wish I could tell you that the reason we got into this mess in the first place was due to the sheer insanity that this man possessed and that my friends and I did not provoke him whatsoever. But as you can imagine, that's not what happened. So what essentially happened was this. So I live in Portland, Oregon, born and raised. Out on my basketball court is where I spend most of my days. <laughs> when one particular night, a man who was seemingly up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood. <laughs> And so this man approached the fence that separates my basketball court from my yard and started spewing gibberish at us while we were trying to play. And like most rabid teenage boys, we were always on the ready to force our masculinity down the throats of our enemies, or really anyone for that matter. And so this man approached us as we did him, and hence began the hostility. And it turned out, surprise, surprise, he wanted to party. Well, we essentially told him that we're not interested and we're also underage and that he should get lost, yet he stayed very persistent. And I'll admit, regardless of my extensive debate background, this man seemed to always have an equally, if not more powerful comeback to the things me and my friends had to say to him. Kind of like when we said, well, dude, we don't really trust you, and so he assured us that he had only done cocaine and shrooms together three times. <laughs> very impressive. Very reassuring. And so, as you can see, he usually just responded with the things that we had to say to him, with how he approached us, which was, may I remind you, gibberish. And so, getting fed up with each other, we began to argue. And this argument quickly escalated to the point where he reached into his backpack and pulled out the revolver that you've all become so acquainted with the past couple of minutes. And let me tell you, <laughs> there's something very sobering about having a loaded weapon pointed at your face. As much as I wish I could tell you the thoughts running through my head during this time were, which diehard catchphrase should I say once I disarm this fool and put him a wishy finger hold, it wasn't. All I could really think about was how badly I wanted to run back to my room and hug my mom. And so we ran. And thankfully, as reality hit us, it hit him, and he ran the complete opposite direction. I guess somewhere along the lines, he sobered up a little bit too and realized maybe I shouldn't shoot four 17-year-old kids on their property because they won't do drugs with me. I don't know. Whatever his reasoning, I'm extremely grateful. But it was a lack of civil conversation that resulted in this dangerous situation. No one attacked us and held us at gunpoint. There was no pre-existing anger fueling this man's desire to threaten us or for us to hurt his feelings. Yet none of us, nor the man, had the verbal skills necessary to come to a solution that did not conclude in violence. And this began to make me wonder why this was. Why, when thrown into a foreign situation where neither of us knew each other, did we immediately jump into arguing as opposed to discussing? And why did we resort to the most unnecessary form of resolution, which is violence? And I began to think of all the other situations that could have been solved simply by talking things out. See, humans have been given this phenomenal gift, which is the ability of fluid communication. Granted, we've deducted that we are not the only species capable of communicating our thoughts with one another, but we know that no other species has the advanced communication abilities that humans naturally have stored in their brains. And with that natural ability, the previous generations have continuously blessed us with the creation of language. And the 6,500 languages existing today have vastly evolved and been tailored towards us what I mean by this is that through the centuries, through the generations, we have exponentially developed our languages to the point of max capability. In my opinion, and hopefully the opinion of all of you and many others, 
Verbal communication is a gift that we are all privileged to use to express our most intricate, complicated, and complex thoughts and ideas with each other each and every day. So what is this? What is this? Please tell me that man injected me with some of his loopy syndrome because I feel like I'm having a bad trip with all these creepy Simpson looking mo- Oh! Faces staring down at me. I mean, really people, are we going backwards? Because correct me if I'm wrong, but don't these look a whole lot like this? Ah uh, yes, these are hieroglyphics. And for those of you that don't know what they are, it's what the Egyptians used to communicate. Over 4,000 years ago. <laughs> See, now, of course, when I say this, I'm not saying that emojis are bad or that they are the sole reason that our generation largely refuses face-to-face -face communication with each other. Not at all. Nor am I saying that I don't use them. Heck yeah, I do. I love them. <laughs> but when we are using emojis to express over 30 to 40% of our thoughts and feelings with each other each and every day, Come on. Our leaders, for instance, used to always address us as if we were intelligent. You know, like this. The Gettysburg way. And now we're supposed to merely be satisfied with something like this? Dating has progressed to the mere action of swiping your finger across the screen. We end and begin relationships constantly through our devices. We lay in bed and argue with each other, staring up at our phones. At some point we need to think, did we bring this upon ourselves? Now, all of us realize that when it comes to our future, whether it be long-term employment or relationships, that communication is key. And not unlike what our teachers tell us, we know that we cannot Snapchat our way into our career. But what I fear most of us don't realize is that verbal communication is not just the ability to speak intelligently. What many don't understand is it's a skill like any other that must be practiced. Take for instance, training for a marathon. You will never improve if you cut every practice short. The equivalency to this in communication is the act of DMing or texting, Snapchat, whatever have you. See, well, the previous generations have had their entire lives to practice and perfect the skill of verbal communication. We have become largely reliant on communicating through our phones and technology. Now, this would not have to be a bad thing if the trade-off wasn't our ability to communicate with each other thoughtfully and clearly, but it is. Take, for instance, I don't know, you are going on a date with the person of your dreams, or you're on the job interview for the job of a lifetime, you've always wanted it. Maybe your knees are weak, your arms are heavy, maybe there's vomit on your sweater already, <laughs> and you begin to realize they're not going to ask me for my max snap streak score or for me to define myself in 140 characters or less. We cannot allow our phones to disconnect us from each other and therefore dampen our skills of communication. And I'll admit, I'm a huge hypocrite. Most of you know that I am a huge hypocrite. Me standing up here and talking to you about this is me being a huge hypocrite. And I'll even go as far as to say that my phone has blocked me from more physical conversations than many of you in this room. But I'm working on it. Each and every day I'm working on it. I've been working on it for years. And me standing up here and talking to you about this is me working on it. And yet, heck, I have my phone right here in my pocket. Right here. <laughs> mm. You gotta hate how with the new phones you just, you look at it and it just turns on. Especially when you have so many notifications, you know? Yeah, my buddy Joe, my best friend from back home, he's live streaming this right now. He Snapchat me. For those of you who know me, you know I'm not one to leave people on red. So if you don't mind, 
really quick, as Mr. McPherson did. I just want it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Pardon me one second. What up, bruh? <laughs> Low key in TED Talk. <laughs> T-T-Y-L. Pardon me, excuse me. Um, <laughs> that was embarrassing. As you can see, I have this issue. Many of you have this issue, whether or not you are willing to admit it. And if you don't think it's an issue now, I challenge you to think into the future, maybe a couple years, maybe further. Maybe when the iPhone 12 comes out, or the Galaxy S20. As time progresses, there's going to be more and more ways for us to communicate with each other face to face, less and less. So please. Let's find the joy in talking to each other, face to face, with those that we share this wonderful world with like humans were designed to do. And I promise you, you will even have fun doing it. Thank you.